Well, welcome to this tutorial, which is going to look at setting up a whole scene, modeling and lighting it. And what I want to do is try and recreate an image that was created for the Brazil renderer by a chap called Johan Thorngren. And here's a copy of the image. So we can see we've got a very dramatically lit glass with some ice and some bubbles and some water coming in. So we're going to try and reproduce this. Well, the first step is to model the glass. And I'm going to model the glass by creating a curve and then rotating it. So I want to do this uh, in an orthographic view. So I'm going to hold down the space key and hit uh, 3, I think it is. And I'll get an orthographic view there with the y-axis pointing upwards. I'm now going to zoom out so that we can see that quite clearly. And I'm going to hit the D key bring out our display options. Now it may be that your D key won't work and the reason for that is that hotkeys in Houdini are case sensitive so you need to use the lower case D to bring up the display options. And we can see here that one of the uh, things that this allows you to do is set up a background and I can choose a file. So let me do that. I'm going to choose my hip file and I've got a glass here which I'm going to trace. So let me just accept that. I can just close that. Ah, but I've made a mistake because in fact you need to select this display background image for it to work. So here we've got our glass. Now you can see the glass at the moment isn't moving about. My grid moves and the glass isn't moving. And that's in fact fine. So what I want to do is use the curve tool to create something which will be the outline of the glass. So let me click the curve tool. And what I want to do to start with is make sure that the first point I lay down lies on this axis in the middle here. And similarly the last point I want to lay down must lie on the axis. And the reason for that is that when we rotate the curve we want this to finish up with the points here all joining up. So I want to select grid snapping, which is the first button here, the first snapping button. I can just right click on that to make sure it's selected, like so, and it'll go orange. And the hotkey for that, as you can see, is X. So let me lay down my first, and perhaps even the second I'm going to lay down on the grid and even the third. And now I'm going to turn that off by hitting the X key. And then I'm just going to draw the rest of this freehand like so. Just bring it fairly narrow down here. Now the final uh, point I also want to move, so let me also want to be on the grid, so I've hit X again to turn on grid snapping, and I click the final point. And then to finish, I can either press Enter or I can right click and do Stop Building Curve. And in fact, to see this more clearly, I'm going to turn off the background image. And here we have it. This is my glass. And I'm not going to call this curve object, let's call it glass. And let's dive down inside, and we can see we've got a curve. So I've zoomed in on this curve, and I just wanted to show you that you can actually fiddle about with the curve after you've created it and pressed enter or, or right, use the right-click menu to finish building the curve. For example, if I want to add a point to the curve, I can put my cursor over the top of the curve and shift right-click. And we can't see it very well, but that has just inserted a point there in the middle of the curve. I can also move single points on the curve. I can't move multiple points. To do that, I would need to use an Edit sob. If I want to use single points, I can just click on the point and then drag it around. If I press Ctrl-Z and Ctrl-Z, that will get rid of the point I, I added. If I shift click outside uh, my uh, the, the, the space of the curve, so if we click in an empty space here, we 
connector point to the last vertex, like so. If we want to delete uh, the most recent point, we can use the backspace key. Uh, sorry, if we can use the delete key, that's what I mean. So we can just carry on deleting to get back to where we were. And I'll press enter to get rid of that. And one final thing is I can close the curve. At the moment this is empty. There's nothing joining the first and the last points. Uh, I can close the curve just by clicking on close here. And we can see that once a curve is closed, it becomes an outlined polygonal shape. So it gets filled in. Let me just open it again for the moment. And I want to turn this into a glass uh, by rotating it. So we start off with our glass object, we dive inside to where the curve is, and then I right click and add a revolve sop. And this rotates the curve profile around an axis, and in this case the default, which is the Y axis, is the one that we want. And we can let me press space and one to go back to the perspective view. We can see that we've now got something that looks pretty much like a glass. And I'm going to keep it at closed, which means that the first and last points are connected. If I had open arc, uh, then you can see that I could curve, I could rotate just a bit of it, not the whole of it. But let's leave this at 360 and continue to keep it closed. And I want to probably increase the amount of detail here, the number of divisions. At the moment we've got 10. Let me go up to, say, 30. The other thing we might notice is that the shading is slightly odd. And the reason for that is that this is smoothing these polygons. And we don't necessarily uh, want that to happen. Uh, we can I've just press W to see a wireframe view. And what I'm going to do is just slightly bevel the edges of the glass. So I'm going to press the shift key and then I'm going to click on one of these edges. Rather, first what I'm going to do is hit the 3 key so that I'm selecting edges. And we can see here that if I right click on this, we're selecting edges. So the 3 key has enabled that. I'm going to turn off the grid snapping. So I'm going to select an edge, and then I'm going to hit the L key, and that's going to select the loop. I'm going to do the same for the inside edge here, and hit L again. Now I'm shift clicking on these so that we don't lose our previous selection. And finally, down here at the bottom, L key again, and not finally, in fact, because I also want to use the inside, do the inside here, like so. So those are all the things I want to bevel. So with them selected and with my cursor over the 3D view, press the tab key and then start typing poly bevel. So let's do that. And this is inserted bevels. They're relative bevels. And in fact, it looks like the default is pretty much what we want. So let's have a look and see. Hit the W key again with your cursor over the 3D view. And now we're back in shaded mode. And we can see that that oddness in the shading has now disappeared. So that's pretty much our glass modelled. Uh, let's go on now to have a look at some of uh, the other things we need to model. But before we do that, uh, there is an oddity about the Revolve tool, uh, which I need to mention. And that is that it can sometimes mess out, mess up your normals. Now, as you remember, a normal is a vector which points outward from the surface and enables the renderer to distinguish the inside of the object from the outside of the object. So what we want is our normals all pointing out of the surface. Now we can display normals by using this button here which is, shows a polygon with an arrow coming out of it, or a line coming out of it. And in fact it looks like in this case my normals are in fact correct are they? No, in fact they're not correct. You can see what we're seeing are normals pointing right through the object and out the other side, which shouldn't be happening. So I'm going to need to reverse the orientation of 
this surface, so let's do that. And we can now see that those normals are now pointing correctly out of the surface. There's one other bit of tidying up which can be important. Uh, it probably won't be in this case, but let's do it anyway. And that's to do with how Houdini has created this object. And it's to do with these two endpoints that we've got in our curve, which have now become the two points here at the center of the base of the glass. And let's have a look at these and just let's just turn on point numbers. And we can display point numbers using this button here. And it's very hard to see, but you should be able to see that whereas these numbers have a single number attached to each point, there are lots of overlapping numbers here. And that's because as this has been rotated, uh, you're getting a new point for each of these different curves that's used to create the object. So you're building up a huge number of points here when actually you don't need them. Let's turn off the numbers. And then I'm going to select by hitting S and then two for points. And I'm just going to carefully select, shift select the point at the bottom here and this one here. Let's just try that again. There we go. And let's just rotate our object to check we've only got those two. I haven't. So if I shift select there, let's control select instead. That'll make sure those are not selected. Right, we've now just got these two points. And with those selected, I'm going to hit the fuse node. And what this should do is merge all of those points into a single point. And as I say, this is not strictly necessary on this occasion, but it's neat modeling. So if we middle click here, we can see that there were 480 points back here before we did that fuse. And then after the fuse, there are 422 points because points have been merged together here. Well, that's the glass done. So let's hide it. And the next thing I'm going to do is try and create an ice cube or two. So let's start with a box. I'm just going to hit enter. I've used box from the shelf tool, hit enter. And I'm going to dive straight inside. And what I'm going to do is make this into a polygon mesh, which increases the number of divisions a little bit. And I'm maybe even going to increase them a little bit more. And the other thing I'm going to do is lengthen this. And because we're inside a geometry object here at the SOP level, these controllers are actually going to change uh, the size parameter here rather than transforming the object. So let me see whether I can click this and drag it out like that. So that's going to give us a bit more size. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just subdivide it a little bit. Uh, that's actually the wrong node. Let's just try again. So subdivide. And that's going to produce a slightly more rounded effect like this. That's starting to look a little bit like a block of ice. But we're going to need to edit it quite a bit. Now I could do that by using editing tools and moving each of these points. Uh, but a better way to do it is to use the Sculpt tool. So let me lay down the Sculpt tool, like so. And make sure the display flag is on it. And now when I go into the view here, you can't see it very well. There's actually a little paintbrush cursor now under the arrow there, a little red circle. And what I can do is hit the Shift key and then drag my mouse, like so, and I can get a much bigger brush. And you can just about see that. We can see that the radius has gone up to 0.4. Uh, and let's try sculpting. So if I now hit the left key, that's going to expand. If I hit the right mouse button, sorry, the middle mouse button, it's going to dent, push inwards. 
And so I'm going to just carry on doing this to sculpt this in and produce something a little bit more interesting. But what I'm going to do is stop the video while I'm doing this. Well, I've sculpted this a bit. Let me hit the W key to change back to shaded mode. And we can see that we've got a problem, which is that we've pushed in some of these vertices so much that they're sort of overlapping each other, and that's not going to render well. And I can sort this out by smoothing the changes that I've done. And the best way uh, to do that, you can use this control here, but the best way to do it is actually to right click and then we can see we can select uh, the left mouse operation to be smooth points. So let's just left mouse on this and we can see that it's now smoothing out like so. And that's smoothing out a little bit. So that's created a block of ice. And what I might now do is subdivide it again, just to smooth it off a little bit more. So that's one block of ice. And what I'm going to do is create a, a second block of ice, and perhaps even a third. And I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Well, here's my second ice cube, mainly modelled. And what happens if I wanted to make a more dramatic change than perhaps sculpting allows? Well, we can use the edit sob. So, in fact, uh, what I'm going to do is lay down an edit sob. Normally, you would just select a point and then hit one of the keys, which allows you to edit here. So, in fact, let me just do that to demonstrate that. So I'm going to move into wireframe mode. I'm going to hit S to select, 2 to select points. And then I'm going to zoom in. And I'm just going to select a point here. There we go. I've just got a single point selected. And if I press T now, I move into translation mode. So I can move that point about, like so. And we can see that when I hit the T key, this edit op automatically appeared. And I can move this point on its own, or I can increase the soft radius here, as it's called, which will mean that proportionately points nearby will also be affected. So now I've increased this to 0.7, and as I move it around, we can see uh, that it is affecting all those other points. So let's move it out like this and perhaps up a bit as well. And that will create an interesting area. Now let's also select a point back here. You can see that our soft radius is maintained. And I can now that move all of that in. And perhaps a point down here. And do the same. So that's created a much more interesting shape for our piece of ice hit the W key to have a look and see what it looks like in smooth shading mode. And that's looking fine. Before we leave the edit sop, uh, let's have a quick look at a couple of other things that you can do with it. So let me hit the W key to move to wireframe mode. And this time let's select a point at the back here. And instead of being on the transform tab here, let me move to the peak tab and we can see that our handle turns into a single line like this. And that's because the peak allows you to move a point along its normal. So if I move this, we can see that that moves out more or less in the X direction. What happens if I select a point up here, which is not uh, exactly flat, and we turn on peak, and we can see that this is now pointing up at an angle, and again, if I move that, it moves out like so. Now you'll notice that I've, as I've done several edits here, we've just got a single edit sop. 
and the edit sulp is allowing you to edit uh, to do a great many edits and contain them within a single sop and this is obviously very convenient if you're doing basic modeling the disadvantage of course is that you can't animate any of the modeling that you're doing here you can't set keyframes on any of this because you can't have access to your earlier edits anyway I think that's uh, more or less finished uh, second block of ice uh, and I'll just complete a third one and leave it because I'm not going to show you step by step because it's going to be exactly the same technique that we've just used and then I'll unpause the video. Well I've now enabled the display of all three of those blocks of ice and the glass as well and we can see that they all overlap at the bottom of the glass and we're going to need to move them eventually but the for the moment I, I want to switch them off. Now as it happens uh, Houdini doesn't have a layer system. And what I could do is just select all three of these, unclick the display flag, and all three of them will be switched off. Uh, another thing I can do which sort of simulates a layer is to take uh, all three of them, select them, and then press Shift-C. And this creates a subnet. So I can call this ice cubes. So we've got a single node here at the top level. If I dive in, I'm still at the scene level, so I haven't dived into SOPs, but I've now got my three ice cubes. So that enables me, if I switch off the display of this, to ensure that all of my ice cubes are hidden at the same time. Well, the next thing I want to do is create my liquid, and this is going to be quite a tricky operation. So for this to work perf properly, uh, we're going to need to actually do some pretty complicated things with this glass. Uh, but before I do that, I want to make damn sure that we've got enough detail here in the glass that it's going to render properly. Uh, because if we don't, it's going to be hard to go back afterwards. So one of the things I can do is just go into my render view. And if I hit render, then it will automatically create a node for me. And it will render out the glass here and I think that's probably got enough detail. It's looking reasonably good when it's rendered. So what we want to do is create some liquid in here and I'm going to do this uh, in quite a complicated way and I'm going to do it here within the node in which we, we created our glass. So the first thing I'm going to do may seem a little bit odd but it's quite a common technique in Houdini and it's quite important to demonstrate it. So let me hit S and 2 select a point and I'm going to select the middle point again here at the bottom of the glass. And if I then select 4 that's going to convert that selection to primitives, in other words polygon faces, and it's selected the whole of the bottom of the glass. And then if I press Shift G, that will grow that selection. And I can grow it until it's right at the top of the glass. Here, that should do fine. And then I'm going to hit the Delete key. And that deletes everything that I just uh, selected. But I'm actually going to delete non-selected. And then I'm going to, with this uh, node selected, I'm going to press Control c Control v and that's going to duplicate it, and I'm going to switch off the Delete non-selected. So I've now got two glasses. One of them has the outside of the glass, the other has the inside, and it's the inside that I'm interested in. And what I want to do is create a liquid pouring in here and then connecting with this glass. So I'm going to work on this uh, version of the, the inside of the glass here. And what I want to do is create a surface for our liquid. And I'm going to have it high at this side and low at this side and, and slightly varying. So let's do that by using a poly split tool here on the polygon shelf. Uh, but before we go into that, I'm going to change the display to flat wire shaded. It'll just make it a bit easier to make sure that I don't select the sort of back-end surfaces of this. 
and I can use poly split and let's start over here and I'm just gonna move this like this gonna move around gonna move it up a bit maybe start coming back down it's not gonna be regular just Move that like this. We probably need to start coming back down again now, like so. And right at the end here, we need to click back on to this one and hopefully this will match up there let me zoom in so uh, I can see what's happened so I need to delete using the delete key the last one and finish splitting. And that's now split all the way around our cup.